How likely or unlikely, how likely or unlikely is Aaron Rodgers to retire from the Jets because of this injury, to not play another regular season snap as quarterback of the Jets, or anyone else for that matter. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle this. Now, I'm going to set the Maller Sportsbook odds at plus 120. Now, plus 120 indicates that there is a 45% chance, a 45% chance that Aaron Rodgers never suits up for gang green again. Never, ever, ever. So I've got Elizabeth Taylor, coffee shop, and conglomerate. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make garlic fries, which is just wonderful. Now, I don't know who the first person was to put garlic on top of fries. I don't know. But I always think of, like, the San Francisco Giants and uh, going to that ballpark because that's where I first experienced the magic of garlic fries. But that's what we're going to make. All right, so to lead off here or to kick off because we're talking football, Aaron Rodgers, we know that he is complicated. Every human being is complicated, but Aaron Rodgers is more complicated. It's hard to get a firm read on Rodgers because he's quirky. He's extremely quirky. Now, that being said, right, that being said, we have some intel based on the years and years of bloviating about Rodgers and his story. And there are clues that Rodgers has left, little breadcrumbs, and we can choose to eat those breadcrumbs or not. Personally, I like when there's cookie crumbs because I like eating those more than breadcrumbs. But nonetheless, you look at the Rodgers story and you know his mind, I look at what he did last season with the Packers. Didn't play well. And then I look at all of the hoops that the Jets had to jump through to get Rodgers to come back. And his mind was not really into it. It was wandering towards retirement. And the Jets had to get down on their knees. They had to get knee pads to, to convince Aaron Rodgers to come back and play for them. And so the fact that they had to twist his arm indicates that he really wasn't that into it. It seemed like he enjoyed New York. He was going to Broadway shows, going to Madison Square Garden for Knicks games and Rangers games, and everyone was kissing his ass uh, all over New York, and he was the great savior and all that. But the football part of it, having to stay in shape and and working, putting the extra work in, did Rodgers, did he do that? I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he's hanging out in Malibu. Are there a lot of football fields in Malibu? I've only been there a few times. I'm not allowed in that area. Beautiful Pacific Ocean. All the celebrity a-holes live there in Malibu. and They all look down at the peons who don't live there. But I haven't seen a lot of football fields. I've been there. I've been, I've been there a few times for social events and, and whatnot, and I don't recall ever seeing a football field. But what do I know? Uh, so, I mean, you think about it. He went to the darkness retreat, checked that box, He milked it for months and months and months. He's about to enter a new frontier. He's going to turn 40 soon during this season, and then that means he comes back next year. He'll be, the math on that, 41. See what I did there? Did some Maller math on the fly. 41 next year. So Aaron is rich. He's famous. He doesn't have a family. (laughs) He He doesn't have uh, kids. He doesn't have, uh, I don't even think he has a dog. (laughs) He's a free spirit. There's nothing holding him back, which could mean that he's going to keep playing, or it'll mean that he's, I mean, it really depends on how you interpret the evidence on that. I don't think that's a dead giveaway of anything. You can say, well, if you have a family, you want to spend more time with your family. But you could also say, well, you get a lot of downtime. There's this myth that you don't have a lot of downtime when you play in the NFL, which is bullcrap. You have more downtime than if you have a real job, like a real like a real job where you put a lot of hours in. You put hours in in football. It's different. though. It's a different animal. And I will say that to my last breath into a microphone. But he's got a lot going on for him. He's all, he played football his entire life. But it, it, to me, it comes down to this. It is, I call it the Elizabeth Taylor test. What the F is the Elizabeth Taylor test? It's old actress. No, go on. Uh, but it is the cologne, her line of cologne, passion. Pigskin passion. Does Aaron Rodgers still have a passion for pigskin? 
Does he have it? If he does, he'll come back and play. Because there's a lot of you know a lot of the bull crap you got to do in order to have your your tuchus cleaned by the Jets fans. Do you want to do it? We know that Rodgers is not a fan of the militaristic style scheduling of the NFL. We know he doesn't like that, and he just wants to be able to hang out. You know, he's a, he's a hippie. He wants to jump in the VW ba- van and go down to Joe Rogan's house and drink some ayahuasca, and uh, that's it. Call it a day. Just that would be groovy. All right. Now, furthermore. We've got a fair amount of feedback. Believe it or not, we have a bunch of Jets fans that like this show. I don't know why. Uh, And a number of you have reached out to me. Some of you have been positive. Most of you have been very negative with what's going on. The feedback we've gotten from the Maller Militia wing that happened to support the Jets. Most have given us the standard, this is the most Jets thing ever. In fact, we had a caller yesterday that said that on the show. And we hear that about the Mets and Jets. This is the most Mets thing ever. This is the most Jets thing ever. It's like those teams are intertwined together in the New York sports scene. So the sound you heard when Aaron Rodgers crumbled, it was the same noise a lobster makes when it's boiled alive. That was the sound the Jets fans made. It was a primal scream is what it was. And uh, as a... As a public service here, we need to help the Jets fans and the Maller Militia deal with the internal damnation of being a fan of gangrene. So what advice, what advice do you have to the long-suffering New York Jet fan on how to deal with Aaron Rodgers' season-ending injury? The first piece of advice is just take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Uh, Therapeutic. And we mentioned primal scream. That that would also be a way that you could cope with this, another primal scream. Uh, but then after that, you should go to the coffee shop. And there's a name on the sign above the coffee shop. It's called uh, Stages. It's cold, Have a cold brew. Now, I don't drink coffee. Uh, I don't. I should. I've done overnight radio for a long time. But I don't, I don't drink coffee. So go to that coffee shop named Stages. And Jets aficionados... If you are so inclined, uh, you have to go through what I call the five stages of sports fan grief. There are five stages to this as a sports fan when you think that something's going to happen and it does not happen. And I relate to the Jets fans a little bit. My favorite basketball team is the Los Angeles Clippers. And I was convinced that the Clippers had won everything. They got this guy named Kawhi Leonard from Canada. And... Oh, my God, it was the greatest thing. He was the top player in basketball at the time. And here I am thinking championships, championships, championships. Now, the difference is Kawhi's actually played. Not much, but he's played for the Clippers. So, And the Clippers didn't make a Final Four. The Jets haven't made a Final Four with Aaron Rodgers. So it's a little different. But the five stages that Jet fans have to go through in dealing with the agony of Aaron Rodgers' injury. Now, step number one is... We all go through it. Denial. It's like, well, no, this didn't really happen. You're going to wake up and everything will be back and Aaron Rodgers will be running out in the field and he'll be playing against the Cowboys this weekend. Then you've got anger. Now, that's a great emotion. Anger. I'm angry. (sighs) You're salivating and uh, really angry. Uh, then, Then you've got bargaining. Then you're like negotiating, right? There's bargaining. You're like, well, maybe it's not that bad. Well, no, it's that bad. So that's another stage. Uh, and, and then you've got depression, realizing you're going to watch Zach Wilson drop a deuce at the 50-yard line every game. Uh, and you've got that. And the, the, the Jets are going to run an offense where everything is right at the line of scrimmage. That's depressing. And then finally you accept the reality that, well, maybe it's not that bad because now you'll have your, your first-round pick and now you could tank, and but then you're not bad enough to tank. and. And then you're like, well, maybe this Zach Wilson will turn out to be Kurt Warner 2.0 or Nick Foles, right? Nah, probably not. Probably not. All right, parting shot. Let's go to TV land, a place I'm not that familiar with. I've just learned a little bit about TV recently. So it has come to our attention that a well-known former NFL quarterback, Peyton Manning, said something that was rather outrageous on, I guess they call it the Manning cast. 
And he had a viral moment. It involves Aaron Rodgers. So I don't know if you saw this or not. I did not. Somebody sent me the clip here. But after Rodgers left the game in a golf cart, after that, Peyton Manning said on that live television show that he did not know that Zach Wilson was still on the Jets roster. Okay. Now, some people think that Peyton Manning was joking, that he was being a comedian. Because he's funny. Likes to tell jokes. So do you believe that Peyton Manning did not realize that Zach Wilson was still on the New York Jets roster while plausibly broadcasting from a sofa somewhere a Jets game? Do you believe that he didn't know? My answer, 1,000%. 1,000%. Peyton Manning had no idea. No idea. Zippo. I am a believer of that. I believe that Manning is a busy guy. And he is not just your typical retired quarterback. He is multitasking. And if you were to make a big board of Peyton Manning's priorities, preparation for the Manning cast is very low on the list. He's got people to do that for him. He's got underlings. That will take care of that. It's not a high priority. This guy is a media magnet right now, Peyton Manning. He's rolling in the dough. He's running a global media conglomerate with all the different shows that he's in charge of. He was producing the quarterback show for Netflix. He's got the the Manning cast. He's got a bunch of bunch of documentaries. Like, like a couple years ago, I got asked, uh, I think it was last year, I got asked to do a documentary. And the, one of my buddies who does documentaries said, hey, can you come in and be one of the guys on the documentary? I said, sure. And I didn't know anything about it. And it was like the History Channel, and it was a Peyton Manning documentary. It's like, oh, okay. They just slap Peyton Manning's name on everything. So he, he's coordinating digital media content across the universe. You think he's worried about Zach Wilson? He sure as hell ain't watching Jets exhibition games, and nor do I blame him. I'm not either. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. 